As political parties in the country begin to strategize ways on how to secure victory during the 2023 general elections, many Nigerians are also looking towards the Independent National Electoral Commission to deliver a free, fair and credible election. Despite the skepticism about the performances of INEG, a high turnout of eligible voters was recorded during the continuous voter registration exercise across the country, which indicates that citizens had shrugged off the past disappointments and are ready for the coming elections. Well, joining us to discuss this uh, is Dele Alake. He is the Director of Strategic Communication for the Tinubu Shatima Campaign Organization. It's so good to have you join us. How are you? Thank you for having me. Great. So we obviously know that the APC has um, its job cut out for it for 2023. And there are several questions here to be asked, especially for the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, um, former governor of Lagos State, um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. So I'll start by asking you, can you quickly, because you've worked with him, you've worked with him for so many years, you obviously do know the man more than everybody else, and there's several questions that people will want to ask. So st we'll start by asking, um, tell us more about this gentleman, because there's so many people who have questions and controversies that surround him. But what would you say about the man Tinubu? What I will say uh, briefly about the man, uh, actually a program of a whole day is not enough to talk about Bola Tinubu, but we can just uh, synthesize and, and uh, encapsulate the major points. Bola Tinubu is a thinker, is an unparalleled thinker, and is a doer. Now, in the life of Nigeria, and I've said this at various forums, we've not had or we've not been fortunate to have leadership at the center that has com combined the three critical attributes of a progressive leader, and that is vision, knowledge, and courage. Now, we are having these three attributes combined in Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and there are examples on each of these attributes. There are examples of his vision. There are examples of his knowledge. There are examples of his courage spanning across all the gamut of all human endeavor or public administration. Look at, let's give uh, uh, the most eloquent testimony of a vision. Look at Eco Atlantic. Eco Atlantic City, many years ago, was just water. Water. The beach was surging and was eroding the entire Amadou Bello way and reducing the value of the, of the, of the properties abutting that road, abutting the beach, and threatening the entire Victoria Island. And the federal government of that era was only pouring sand, sand filling every year. And the, the raging beach would, of course, eat up the sand within nine months. And Dola Tinubu said no. There must be a permanent solution. Dreamt up the idea of an Atlantic city started the project in 2001 and successive governors after him of course continued it and today you and i can see what eco atlantic city is it has attracted the, uh, the u.s embassy is building the its, its most its largest embassy in the world on that in that place a 500 million dollar foreign investment that's an example of vision None of his contestants, none of his opponents has that track record. Look at knowledge. When he got into office, the IGR, internally generated revenue of Lagos State was 600 million. Some people are contesting it, and I count them as ignoramuses. They are ignorant. Uh, General Bubamawa is alive. He's the chairman of NDLA. He was the one that Tinubu took over from. General, they can go and ask him. General Marua met the IGR of Lagos State at 300 million. He himself brought in a, 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 a consultant and grew the revenue to 600 million. It was at 600 million when Marua exited and Tinubu came in. And he brought in the mechanism, a new mechanism, and instituted that mechanism that started, you know, the IGR galloping, made the IGR to start jumping up. And he was plugging loopholes with technology in the payroll system, in administration, and plugging leakages, blocking leakages. The revenue started jumping up. 
And by the time he was leaving from 600 million, it was making the 7 billion mark. And today, it's over 50 billion. The same mechanism that he instituted then has not been changed and it has been going up. And that same mechanism has been copied by several other states. And in fact, it's moving out of Nigeria into some other African countries. That's knowledge. Okay. Now, take courage. When, when, when Lagos was 20 local governments, the, Lagos has arguably, debatably, the largest population in Nigeria. That is incontrovertible. Everybody knows that. Everybody from everywhere, even across West Africa, is flocking into Lagos on a daily basis. And Lagos has the tiniest land area in the entire country. Now, what that means is urban blight, concentration, a lot of use and cries in terms of administration, in terms of daily, daily uh, exigencies of living. And this all costs money. Now, Bella Tinubu started and said there must be more local governments to bring government nearer the people of Lagos State. There were other states that had less population than Lagos, but had over 40 local governments. And then he created more local governments. He was not alone there. There were other four states, Niger, I think Niger, uh, I think Abia, uh, Katsina, I'm sure of this one. About four other states joined him and created. And then that federal government of that era said no, that you couldn't create local government. And ceased and, and threatened to stop the revenue allocation accruing to local government. Other okay. states, other states reversed. They reversed. They didn't have the courage to go along with it. It was only Bola Tinubu who kept on and fought the case at the Supreme Court and won. And the Supreme Court said the federal government was, it was unconstitutional for the federal government to stop the allocation to local governments or any tier of government. However, that federal government still insisted and stopped the allocation throughout the tenure uh, until Bola Tinubu left. That was about two years or something like that. Okay. Now, yeah, today, today, most states are creating more local governments and calling it LCDA, Local Government Development Area, which was also a creation of Bola Tinubu that is courage. I could go on and on. Well, because you, you said, like because, we, because we don't have time and you said that it would take we, us we all day. We don't have to like Bola Tinubu's face, but there are certain things that facts are incontrovertible. Opinion is free. Facts are sacred. Okay. So, still talking about controversies here. Um, there are a lot of people who have different per perceptions about the man, but let's talk about his education. Um, we know mm -hmm. that um, you're here to, of course, clear the air about a lot of things. So help us clear the air about his um, education. What school did he, what what school did he go to? What secondary school did he attend? I mean, like I like I said at the beginning, you know the man. That that, that, that is that is quite immaterial. Now let me tell you why. No, but it's he, important yeah. to Nigerians to know the no, man who wants to lead them, who wants their no, vote. Your the, question. You have to listen to my response, okay. and I'll tell you why. Okay. The constitution. Spells, spells out the requirements, the educational requirements for qualification into various offices, either into local government, governorship, presidency, whatever. It is there stated. And what's the presidency? What's the qualification? I mean requirement. It is you have to have education up to school SAT level. Up to it did not even say you should pass it. It says up to school certificate level. Okay. Now, this man has a university degree which is incontrovertible. Mm. It has been verified from Chicago State University. Now, what before then, he was at Richard Daly College, which is a community college, which is pre-university. Now, those who have read abroad know what this is about. Now, in terms of uh, the elementary or, or, or high school or whatever, now, it depends on your background. If you are lucky that you had a background, a privileged background, or parents who are well here who could send you to all of those schools, you are lucky. If you are the type that was indigent, that could, you had to pull yourself up from the bootstraps, then you did what you call home studies. Go and ask the elders, what they know what is called home studies. You study at home, you work, you study at home, 
at home and you then take exams. And that's what this guy did. Studied at home, traveled abroad, and got into uh, 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 Richard Daly College. So, so you're State saying Perry. that you're saying that the former governor of Lagos State was homeschooled because Festus Kayamo, at the, uh, you know, at, during an interview, said that people didn't go to school at the time. So, does this mean that he did not go to school, no, but no, he no, sat no, at no. home and no, wrote no, no, an no. examination? I, I was he I homeschooled? Said, no, I don't think Kayamo said people didn't go to school. He said there was an option. If you could not attend the formal school, the formal four walls of a school, you had the option of reading at home and passing exams. In fact, beyond that, there were also uh, what you called correspondence in schools at that time, which was uh, pre pre uh, university. Pre, you could even attend those evening classes and take your exams and pass your exams. There were various options at that time. It's unlike now that you had schools in every corner or that you had more people uh, able to afford the school fees. If you are not able to afford this, this man should be given credit for bringing himself up from the, from the lowliest of levels and attaining this height. And, now, and that's why I said it is envy. Those who had all the privileges cannot attain half of the, of the achievements of this. So they had to resort to all sorts of extraneous uh, uh, issues that really don't make the mark. The, 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 the hood does not make the monk. It is the substance that comes out of you. How has this man been able to really make all these achievements? Where we have people who had all the privileges from elementary school to high school to university and all of that, and who couldn't make the mark, who could not acquit themselves creditably when it even comes to academics, intellectualism, and all of that. So this man should be giving credit rather than piloting him out of envy, out of extreme jealousy. Okay. Let them compete with him. Still talking about controversies and questions that need to be answered, because I do not know if the people who he's seeking their votes fall in the category of people who are jealous, because do, do you not think that Nigerians deserve to know certain information about the man who it wants is, to lead them? Uh, but but do, I, I go to my question. To know, but they deserve to know, but the people who are adumbrating and propagating this negative are those who are jealous of him, who could not make his own attainment. So, so, not the voters, so even not if the even if this is the, the truth, why voter. can't the truth just be said to Nigerians and let's move on with it? But let, let's talk isn't, about isn't his health. Isn't that what we are saying? Isn't that what we have said? Yes. And we have said this. Let me tell you another thing. This is not the first time we are making this known. But you see, when you are consumed with envy and hatred, you refuse to assimilate the truth. It is that your fixation, your obsession. That is in your focus. And that's what's happening to those. That's why they keep repeating and repeating and repeating okay. the same thing. Not because they don't know or they've never had. They know. Uh, Mr. Lake, let's talk about his health. Do you think also that Nigerians des deserve to know the status of Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu's uh, health? Um, there, have, there have been many videos, um, many concerns rather, about how he's faring and if he's fit for office. And this is not the first time Nigerians are asking the question. The same was asked uh, when President Buhari was running for this office. So can we know what his health status is? Very, very sound. The, the Nigerians have a, reason, I mean, have a good reason to ask for anybody's health, anybody that aspires to rule over them. It is their, it is their constitutional right to know the state of health of that person. So I'm not uh, judging anybody for asking for a state of health. But what we are saying is that, hey, this man is, is healthier than even his most ardent critics. And I'll tell you why and how. If you do, I always tell people, please do a critical analysis, especially media folks. I'm a media person myself and trained to boot. And during our time, we were trained to critically analyze, not to accept insinuations, rumors, innuendos, hook, line, and sinker, and begin to propagate it. Now, Ashiwa Jubala and Tinubu, before the primaries, tell me which of the aspirants 
that traverse the length and breadth of Nigeria conversing for votes for delegates like Ashura Jubala and Etinubu. And every, all through the period, they were saying he was he, he couldn't move. And he was moving all over the country. He was traveling. Even younger elements didn't have the same stamina. And tell me, even after the primaries, when he became the candidate, tell me another, another person that's been moving around, consulting with all categories of, of, of people, interest groups, voters, and all, the, all, all that. And apart from all of this, these are things open to the public. Let me now tell you what's not open to the public, which some of us are privileged to have known for, for decades within. If you work with Ashiwaju, that's when you will know the man's style of working. He, he rarely sleeps. And please, go and do a content analysis or a random survey of all the people that have had close proximity to him, that have been working with him. Ask them. No, they, they either you either grow go gray or or go bald or have bags under your eyes or develop wrinkles because of the grueling nature of his working style. He rarely sleeps. He's always pouring at books, meetings, developing ideas, thinking, looking at issues from all angles. So he rarely sleeps. Now, if okay. he's an unhealthy person, he cannot keep up that schedule of work for the last 30 years that I've known him. And it's still the same till tomorrow. Now, let me now come to the issue of uh, uh, going to hospital for treatment or whatever. Who, if including you, who is very young now, don't you have headaches, occasional health issues that you have to call your doctor and all of that? As a human being, everybody goes through that. And that is not a big deal. That is nothing. And let me tell you, God forbid, don't young people fall, fall, fall down and, and pass? Elderly people fall down and pass? Middle-aged people fall down and pass? Only God has the power of life and okay. death. All right. Let's move on. One, one final question about the man, and then we'll go into the politics of the, um, you know, the, politics of the APC. Um, Let's talk about the fact that, I mean, many people would refer to uh, Bolamet Tinubu as uh, a godfather of sorts and responsible for some of those who have his, you know, the guys who've taken his successors, um, the likes of um, Fashala um, and all the other governors that have come after him. If this is true, right. if this is true, why does right. it seem like the campaign uh, of... BAT, B-A-T, of course, is trying to disassociate itself from the APC's achievements or some of the, the worst things that's happened in this country, being that he was the man who canvassed for votes for President Buhari. Is it true that your campaign you, is trying to separate yourself? Are you asking the double barrel questions? Because there are yes, two I'm asking a two-pronged question. Yes. Uh, we, we call it double barrel in the newsroom. Now, let me take you the first one about uh, being a godfather. And I uh, I've been asked this on channels or one other station, and, I, and I've given you the same, the same response. There is nothing intrinsically, inherently, innately wrong with godfatherism in politics. Because it happens all over the world. Somebody must develop somebody. In fact, it is a hallmark of good leadership to be able to mentor other, others and develop other leaders. It is only a bad leader, a myopic leader, a parochial leader, whose horizon is narrow, that cannot develop other leaders. So those who are ascribing negative connotation to the, to the idea of godfatherism in politics regarding Ashwaju, they are myopic, parochial, incompetent, and inefficient to develop other leaders as he has done, and that's, that's why the envy comes. And I gave examples. Our revered sage or sages, Awolowo, he was a godfather. Why? Because he developed other leaders. So many governors, he sired political leaders, okay. like uh, the Jedi Conde, Ajashi, uh, late on Obanjo, and Ambrose Ali up in Edo State and all that. The late Nadia Zikwe was a godfather. He sired other political leaders. The late, late Amadou Bello, Sir Amadou Bello, was a godfather. 
because he gave back politically to other leaders. So why why should Bola Tinubu's own be different? Why should a negative connotation be ascribed to it? Because he developed other leaders. He should be given accolades for okay. that. So, so but, but then but then people are asking but people are asking why does it seem that your campaign is trying to disassociate itself from some of the failures of the APC led administration? It is not even true. It is it is very untrue. Help us I know it. that uh, um, Kayamo that you mentioned, there are several times he's been on on different uh, fora and the questions have been thrown to him because he is an integral part of this government. He is an executive officer of the government. So he is, he is, he is assumed to have deeper inner knowledge of the workings of this government in terms of his achievements. And he has been reeling out some of his achievements. And it is not true that the campaign is distancing himself. No, it's not possible because it is still the same party. It's the same platform. What, the, what I think it was... Uh, former Governor Shiomole, at one of the interviews, that said that you cannot hold Ashiwa Jutinumbu directly responsible for some of the challenges confronting this administration. Why? Because, yes, Tinumbu advocated for this government to come into office, but he has not for one day been an executive member of the government. No. Is, are, do, are you telling me that all APC members are supposed to know exactly what goes on in the executive council of the government? No. So you cannot hold them responsible. Whereas, let us even come to grasp that. This government, yes, it has challenges in the area of security, in the economy, and all that. Particularly the security. There are challenges. Nobody can run away from that if you want your credibility. Okay. You know, to be sacrosanct. However, what we are saying is that even if your son, if you are president today and you, you had to hand over to your son, your son will still have certain things. Maybe his style of administration, his approach to issues will be quite different from All yours. Right. That does not mean that your son is no longer your son. So let me ask a quick question before I go into the, the party policy because we're almost out of time. So you're saying to Nigerians who are watching now that the Buhari administration have, has done really great and, and that... Your your yes, your candidate that your candidate as if he were to if he were to be president will continue on those gains if there be any. This is if what you're saying to Nigerians. Gains, and they are against. Let us be factual and objective. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Laka, I just want a yes or no answer so I can I'm so sorry. The, the, the government has done fairly okay. Great. In fact, more than average in infrastructural development. Only. And we are also infrastructural development. And, and that's all that Nigeria seen, needs right now. Seen, have you ever seen any government that and, and that's all that we need right now as we're no, being bedeviled by insecurity possible. on one hand, as our economy but, but is facing a security. downturn, as, as, as our monies are being stolen and corruption is rife. This is, this is what we need to be building on infrastructure at this time, really? Oh, for God's sake, why do you think there is corruption? Why do you think so? So there is a corruption. Unfortunately, there is so much abysmal ignorance out there about the dynamics of administration, about the dynamics of public this service. This is interesting. You see, when you want to call, uh, tackle corruption, tackle economy, security, and all of that, there are mechanisms to put in place. Some of these mechanisms don't even germinate, even within the lifespan of that current administration. It could be the next administration because government is a continuum. And some of these things have gestation periods. So that, that I say that the government has done fairly okay in infrastructure does not invalidate its area of challenges. No, do not put words and, 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 and into my mouth or misconstrue what I'm saying or misinterpret it to the unwary public. No. I'm not saying that it does not have challenges. I'm saying that it has recorded remarkable success in the area of infrastructure. infrastructure. That, not, that, and that does not invalidate the challenges, not at all. Okay. And all we're right. saying that the coming Tinubu government is going to take all of those challenges, confront them because of his track record. We cannot build, give Nigeria now, at this stage, to people who have no track record of performance who will come and experiment. Okay. And that is disastrous.
Mr. Lackey, before we wrap up, I want to go to something, a statement that was made here in Lagos um, by mm -hmm. your candidate's mm -hmm. running mate during the NBA conference. Mm -hmm. He did talk mm -hmm. about the fact that um, he would be in charge of um, you know, security. He, he, he talked about that and that your candidate will be in charge of the economy. And this also, one way or the other, didn't rub off well on Nigerians, especially when the president is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces and security should be his number one role. Why do you think that Shatima made that statement? Himself is a human being. And there are every human being, including yourself, is so, and myself, is subject to sleeps. What Shetima wanted to tell you was that the commander in chief could or may ascribe that portfolio to him. The constitutionally, the president and uh, the president gives assignment to the vice president. The vice president is as as assigned, his duties as assigned apart from being a uh, chairman of uh, the Economic Council and such other constitutionally stipulated rules. So that is not such a big deal to now begin to adumbrate all over the place okay. and making a mountain out of a no hill. It isn't. Okay. Everybody knows that the commander-in-chief remains the commander-in-chief. All right. You can even appoint somebody from outside the, uh, the, 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 the circle, the loop of government, not be in charge of security if he so decides. Okay. If he so decides. So the the box stops on the table of the president. All right. And finally, yes. finally, I want to ask you this question. If I don't ask you this question, I don't feel like we've done justice. Um, finally, what do you think about the Peter B phenomenon? I mean, I mean, I've heard people who support your candidate say he doesn't have a structure, etc. But do you think that the Peter B phenomenon and of course the wind or the wave that comes with it? Is something for your party to worry about? No, Peter B is a fluke. Is a fluke. How do you mean? And I mean, and I'm saying that with all sense of responsibility. Apart from not having structure or anything, when Nigerians closely scrutinize everybody's antecedents and records of performance, you will see that Peter B will fail into insignificance. He ruled Anambra for eight years. Tinubu ruled Lagos for eight years. Put the achievements on the table, on in vision, in knowledge, in courage. Put everything on the You will see that Peter Obi will pay into insignificance. Peter Obi now is pandering to the wings of the largely ignorant section of the populace. One, two, the anti tinumbu haters. Three, the part of a section of the youth that really don't have a sense of history that did not know when Peter Obi was in office or when Tinubu was in office and did not know about their records to do a comparative analysis. These are the issues. And this all, as we go along, it will fizzle. We have seen such before in the past. And then you now come to the nitty-gritty of the dynamics of electioneering and pattern of voting across the nation. Go and study it. You will see that it does not... All the, the hues and cry on social media. You, social media doesn't win elections because that's not where you vote. You vote in the polling booth. Those, the majority of people who even vote are not on uh, this year. We have to go, Mr. Uh, Lake, Mr. Lake, Mr. Lake, we have so, to go, unfortunately. So it's all a fluke. Yeah, well, it's we don't have time fluke. anymore, but I want to thank you. Dele Alake is the Director of Strategic Communications for the Tinubu Shatima Campaign Organization. It's a pleasure having you on the program tonight. Thank you for having me. Great. And that's it uh, on Plus Politics tonight. I'll be back tomorrow as we continue to talk for development. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.